So Jorge Masvidal got the fucking shit kicked out of him, huh? <laughs> <laughs> dude, real bad. Unbelievable. Oh my God, almost. dude. Like, I think, I, I called it because there was a moment where he was slipping shots. Yep. And Usman was, you could tell Usman was like, Kind of a little anxious, like he was trying to get his hands on him in the first round. Yep, for sure. And Masvidal, I think, came in thinking, dude couldn't touch him on the feet. He didn't feel any of his power. Yep. You know, he'd be fine. And he was moving straight back with his hands down, which was working a little bit with when Usman was throwing those hooks, those like nervous hooks. For a little bit. And then you could see... A little bit of the overconfidence and that signature smile he gives people. Right. And then through the kind of had his hands down, and from there, it was bad, man. Like, lights out after that. Yeah. Well, part of the reason why that works on the hook is because, like, your arm is only... The distance is only going to go as long as your arm is bent. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Well, with a straight shot, like, you can't just move back. Yeah, like, that's coming right can, for you. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know if you saw the way he set it up. He almost kind of faked the left, had got Masvidal to put his hand up, yeah. grabbed that with the left, took it down, and it was just a clean shot right oh, through, man. That was like cool. almost picture perfect. I don't think you could throw a better strike, got the hit left out of the way, and just went right down the middle and just, dude, right on the button. That was crazy. Yeah. that His coach, Trevor Whitman, is like, he's got him, he's got Rose, who we'll talk about her in a second, Yep. Um, Justin Gaethje, like... Straight killers. He's a bunch of animals. Coach and ass. Oh yeah. <laughs> is that um? What team is that? American or? No, I think I think he's like a. I don't know what the team is, but it's like a his own thing. It's like yeah, an independent yeah. team. Okay. It's almost like you know Israel Adesanya. Yes. Like his team is fairly exclusive. I forget what it's called, but um, it's like him. I was thinking of American Top Team. That's what it was. Right. Yeah. That's and that's one of the big ones. It is American Top. There's a bunch of those all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And people from there are killers. That that specific gym is one of the big examples of filling a gym with a whole bunch of killers yep. and making them rise to each other's skills. Because there's always been, I think in my mind, two ways of training from a coach's point of view. Mm. It's like you either elevate the room and bring in guys that are fucking beasts and people become beasts because of it. Yeah. Or you like take real specific care of of a, of a pupil or a couple pupils. And I can see this probably, you know, you can be the best in the room and until they bring in more talent, mm. you know what I mean? You're no longer the best in the room and it's kind of that, you know, pushing each other, motivation off of each other. But no, there are a bunch of dogs and dude, to see Masvidal go down like that. Oh man. <laughs> dude, dude, did you see him bounce <laughs> off of uh, Usman right after too? Oh, so bad. Like, Cleaned his clock, bounced off, and then those finishing punches, super necessary. He put everything bad that ever happened into his life in the end of that fucking dude, punch, dude. Crazy. <laughs> the amount of power that went into that punch, dude. It's insane. Dude, this, have you seen the, uh, the picture, like the freeze frame of it? Yeah. And Miles Vidal's sweat from his oh. hair is still standing here dude. as his body's like all already over there. Dude, the amount of memes, the amount of times I've seen that video already on... Instagram, social media, everywhere, dude. Oh, you can't just get knocked out. They made a mockery of the poor dude. It's it's terrible. You can't just get KO'd. No, not like that. <laughs> not like that, man. <laughs> you can't just live, dude. It's crazy. Like, no. Like, even for a guy like, uh, what's dude, Matt Ryan? Yep. He'll, people are going to 28 and 3 him to death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's done you for can't, it. You can't live past it. Yeah. And that's what I was going to ask. I mean, we'll get into more of, um, you know, the last fight and the card and everything, but... I think you see after a knockout like that, it's really hard for fighters to come back, whether it's the same caliber or they're worried something like that's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. So if you had to say, what do you think, or what do you foresee Masvidal moving forward? Like, what do you think his next matchup should be? Do you think he just needs some time off to reevaluate? Because after something like that, man, you have to, you got to take a step back, I almost think. A lot of fighters have a hard time coming back after that. Right. Well, Masvidal is one of those guys who fucking... He, that was his 50th pro fight, dude. Yes. Like, he fights a <laughs> lot. He's fought a lot. A lot. And that in and of itself is can wear certain fighters down. Like, for him, it was perfect. Because he, that, like, he found his kind of 
peak, he kind of rose and fell. But yeah. nonetheless, he found it at some point. It was just later on in his career, almost like Nate Diaz. Yeah. Like, Nate Diaz was fighting the fuck out of people forever, and nobody cared. Just getting beat on. Yeah. And, uh, and winning, too, though. Like, beating yeah. the fuck out <laughs> But of I'm saying too. taking a beating for that long to finally get to the place where you are recognized by whether it's, like, the UFC fight community, whatever it is, and you have that. Right. You know what I mean? And, dude, he's already had, Masvidal has now had two title chances and two losses. Right. So it's like, where do you really go from here? You and he's 36. I mean? 36. Yeah. A little bit older. Vicious, vicious KO. Like, that's, I think he said it's the first time. He's never been KO'd before in 50 Definitely not like that. No. Yeah. And in front of, like, his home state, like. Home state, I think that was the first event they've had that was, I don't know if it was full, full attendance. Full, full attendance. Full. Yeah. No so masks, nothing. All, oh, no masks. Yeah. To, so for all that energy back in the place, man, and you're the main fight on, like, you know, on the card and. To go out like that is tough. So, chinned. so what do you think? Before I keep interrupting, what do you think his next step is? Uh, I think he fights. If I was him, I'd probably go for the money fights. Okay. I wouldn't even worry about the title anymore. Like, what? Just watching based on his past interviews, it seems like he just wants to get fucking paid at this point. Like the title fights were the money fights for him. Yeah. So, and plus, you know, you fight in, in the title fight. Your stock rises either way. I mean, he got KO'd fucking bad, but that hurts a little bit. <laughs> but he could fight whoever he wants in that division, and he'll yep. he'll attract people as long as it's you know somewhat compete. That'll only last for so long. Yeah. Unless you're you know, uh, Yoel Romero who loses title fights and big fights, and people are still like, yeah, I want to watch him because Somehow. it's like, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yep. So I don't know. I think he'll probably go for the big fights if he can get Nate again. I would think he'd fight Nate again. He kind of he kind of took that fight though. Like I don't know to see Nate Diaz kind of get beat down like that, especially hand to hand. I mean, they did touch the ground a decent amount of times, but I don't know, man. That's tough to come back from. I mean, he is. I'll still say one of my favorite fighters, more just because of you know who he is. I do like his style, right? And you know, just his whole story of fighting like in backyards, backyards. of like Florida, or Miami, wherever he's from. Right. It is a cool story, and you know, hope to see. You know, him continue his career, but you know. You see, he wants to start, or he's starting a uh, bare knuckle MMA promotion. He is starting it. He's starting it. Yeah, him. I, he put like a video on Instagram with him and some other dude. Yep. They're like, yeah, I forget what it's called. It's something in Spanish, I think. Dude, have you like watched the bare knuckle like leagues that are on like YouTube and stuff? Dude. Insane. BF, what is it? BK. BKFC, Bare That's Knuckle the big fight. one, right? That's the big one. Yeah, it's yeah. like pay-per-view. It's like $20 <laughs> pay-per-view. 1999. Yeah, they're in a field in Kansas. Yep, no yep. fucking fan. <laughs> Beating the hell out of each other. Yeah, there's yep. three teeth in the whole crowd. Dude, it's That's raw. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. raw. Yeah, dude. I, I was. It's funny because they're on. a lot of them are on YouTube for free and you can catch up on yep. them. And sometimes you're just like, yeah, whatever. I'll, I'm scrolling or I'm eating, right? You can. In our society, we can't eat now unless we're watching something. That's how I feel. I am victim to it, yes, bro. Yeah, I'm, dude, I'm not going to eat whatever I spend money on until I fucking. <laughs> until I put the phone on, find us up on YouTube. Yep, and, yep. and more often than not, it's some other guy eating or making food. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's usually what it is. Too. See, for me, I've been on uh, a definitely a big podcast wave, but we can get into that. But um, so the rest of the card. The Chris Weidman. Oh, we dude. gotta talk about it, dude. Full circle, it came. Crazy. Wow. Dude. And first of all, disgusting. Oh. Second, it was crazy to see. It almost went like it just happened the same exact way it did for Anderson Silva. Yeah. You know he what uh, his opponent? I forget his name. Uriah his uh, Uriah Hall. Yeah. yeah. So check the leg kick, dude, and you just see it wrap around the leg. And the grossest oh. part that I hate to watch is that step back. Yeah. You don't even realize. They don't even realize, dude. You go to step back on that back leg and all your weight's on it, and it just cripples away, oh, man. It, it hurts to see and to watch, dude. I walked in. I met some people at Dave & Buster's because no place better to watch a fucking fight when they're playing loud EDM music and there's yep. kids running around with games and you can't see, you can't hear what's going on. But man. anyway. The total distractions. Right. We go there because there's room usually. Yep. But, uh... 
Chris Weidman. Chris Weidman, yeah. We walked in. <laughs> that I'm disgusting stoned. leg of it. I'm stoned. No, uh, good, go ahead. In fact, crack those open if we you We are going to. We, uh, We're going to take a quick break from the podcast. Right. We, uh, last time I came through, I brought Tony something new to try. Sure. I forget the type of margarita it was, but um, it was we're going like to get a... into some, some Juice Lords today. This was recommended by my fellow Irish friend over at Nocera's Liquors. Go check Ooh. them out. A lot of good recommendations. No well, Sarah's. No Sarah's, right down the street, ladies and oh, gentlemen. Oh, that is close, huh? Real close, yeah. Wow. Um, a hobo. <laughs> so we're going to see how they are. We'll give them a rating in a little bit, but... <laughs> but yeah, I walked but. in, and it was right when Weidman got his shit broken. Yep. And, uh, and I was like, whoa, what happened? Whatever. That's when you walked into Dave and & Buster's? And it was done, though. Like, the, what, Uriah Hall was saying, like, sorry, whatever. Yep, yep. <laughs> that was it. That was the end. Yep. So, uh, yeah. But and then I watched it back, and I was like, damn. Like, Uriah Hall just fucking checked it perfectly. Perfectly. Right on the knee, it looked like. Right on the outside of the knee. Kept his leg straight fucking planted like stuck into the ground yes that's what that's what like you have to be careful for because that low calf kick you're seeing the fight before it Anthony Smith took out the dude he fought uh, Jimmy Crew. yeah he kicked his shit and the dude's foot lost all nerve thank you sir I saw that yeah I didn't see um, I didn't see the fight itself I saw afterwards for that fight and dude he looked like he was trying to continue the fight and he's like come on we're fine we're fine and you yeah. just see his like ankle giving away on him as he's trying to like walk back yeah disgusting a lot of leg injuries yeah that kick is brutal but that was because he got kicked it was like he got a massive dead leg somebody gives you a dead leg yep yep it happened down there but with a fucking kick from 220 pound anthony smith you know yep and he was trying man but it just kept giving away on him it looked like he was hitting like the stanky leg or something just trying to walk back yeah. but but if somebody gets cheers good at- brother oh thank you sir mm-hmm. boom lord hobo Looks like it should be like fruity or something, but I know it's an IPA. We're so gonna find out. Oh, that's good. That's really not bad. I like that. We'll give it two sips and a quick rating. No, all right. I like I like your rules. <laughs> I'll give it a. Mm-hmm. We'll go out of five. I'd give that one a four out of five. In all beers or just IPAs, you think? For IPA wise, IPA wise, yeah. Really? See, I'm not a huge IPA fan, so I think this is pretty good because it doesn't taste like one to me. <laughs> so that's why you need. He's like, so I want it not to taste like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, don't, I only. Uh, <laughs> None of the real requirements. So as long as it doesn't taste IPA. like one, yeah, I'll try it out. Yeah. I try to just mix it up, man, and uh, try new things. I mean, mm-hmm. if I'm not having a hard night, like going crazy with drinking, like sitting and sipping an IPA is not too bad. Right. You know, like a distinguished gentleman, you know? Sure. Or See, a, well, we got all the. This is the real distinguished gentleman over okay. here. Don't okay. fuck around. <laughs> He's like, I'll show you the business, dude. <laughs> you guys went to a cigar bar the other night? Um, After you were at Cass or something? Or no. Or just smoke cigars? We were just smoking cigars. Nice. Um, some um, like venue in Providence we went to. Um, shout out to Skyline. Um, it was a good night. But yeah, if you saw me and CJ smoking some some uh, cigars outside, you know, just enjoying ourselves. I fucking, I see why people get addicted to that shit. Smoking's nice. Cigars? Just, yeah. I mean, Or just I, smoking in general? I guess smoking in general. Because I'm yep. taking, I, I took the past month off tobacco. Good for like, you. Yeah. And that's the wave I'm trying to get on right now, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. I it mean, is a bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's a motherfucker, dude. <laughs> yeah, it is. Especially because, like, I like to smoke cigars, and there's way more nicotine in that than, yeah, like, oh, a yeah. wood or something. You know yep. what I'm saying? So I'll smoke one cigar, and now, like, the, the weed I'll smoke it during the day is, I want to roll it in a wood. Yep. It's not even like I'm taking a break. Like, <laughs> I'm just smoking it's more just tobacco. all day. Yeah. And you know, sadly, I was one of the ones that fell to the to the vape and jewel wave. Right. And as of recently, it's just, it, it's so unnecessary, man. Mechanical because I wasn't, cancer. it's just cancer. It's cancer <laughs> in a stick. But no, um, dude, I was never like, I was never like really into cigarettes or anything that crazy before I got into it. Right. Just kind of hopped on the trend. You know, I feel like it's. One of the fads. The, the fads, the right. general, it's like our. Well, you're a little bit older than I am, but I guess my generation age just was like a fad. Right. And then, you know, you get to a point after so long, you just look at yourself and you're like, what, what am I doing with this? <laughs> what was the point the whole time? You know what I mean? Basically, yeah. I felt like anyone who didn't use vapes or like jewels to get off of another, you know, um, form of nicotine. Yeah. It's like. I picked this up to give myself a nicotine addiction. Right? <laughs> right, you know what I mean? The whole time. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Right. So now, yeah, I'm trying to get off of it. It is a bitch. But um, 
I don't know, dude. I think in the long haul, we're going to see a lot, of, especially like our age, even younger, these high school kids. It's going to be long term effects, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For yeah, sure. Yeah, 100%. Especially since there's like the misleading information that it's better for you than yeah. cigarettes. Maybe a better alternative, but that was right. the idea of it. Not all the fucking 16 to like 23 year olds that picked it up because it was like, oh, I'll pick up a jewel. I'll be like everybody else. Right. Well, that's the thing because they're catering to us now because yes. like that's that instant all day gratification. I think about now yes. when I was in high, if I was in high school and those, um, the vapes like for the weed were a thing. Yeah. Oh my God. It'd be game over. All day. Like, You'd just be stoned. All the kids would be stoned all day. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's what's going on now. I would think it is. I will tell you what. It is exactly what's happening right Right. now. Because by the time I was leaving high school, it was just kind of getting... It was just starting up like that. And I have a younger brother who's in high school. And he says pretty much every time he walks in a a bathroom of the high school, it's like a hot box. Whether someone has a dab pen, a jewel, whatever it is, dude. And, you know, kids getting... To be young again. (laughs) Kids getting caught in the bathroom, just bowling the place up. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? It's funny, dude, but... It's crazy. No more smoking in the boys' room. But now we're trying to... Vaping in the boys' We're room. trying to get away from that. We're trying to smoke some stoves, some, you know, awesome cigars. Cigars are it's nice. It's the wave I'm trying to get on. You right. know what I mean? I'm trying to, right. trying to grow up here, right? But the, the thing with the, uh, the jewel and it being such like a, a new wave of um, addiction... In, a new addiction inhibitor is because I think it would work for somebody who smokes cigs and wants to get away from smoking cigs because a big part of being addicted to something yep. is the ritual of it. 100%. So like getting the lighter, getting a new pack, yep. popping it open, smoking The whenever. first rip of it, you know what I mean? Just the... Right, the, spe- yeah. the specific times in the day yep. where you want to do it. But a jewel almost takes that away from the person who wants the tradition or the, 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 the ritual. Yeah. But when somebody new in our generation picks it up, it's exactly what we're looking for. Instant gratification all day, phone, laptop, everything. Now we can just smoke a fucking, we can just smoke all day now. Yep. It's right here in my pocket. I can pull a jewel out of my pocket, a dab pen out of my pocket all yeah. while I, you know, I'm in some wormhole on my phone. I watch fucking 20 videos. I don't even know what I'm doing. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you just get away from yourself. Everything, and you're right. Nowadays, it really is an instant gratification kind of thing. You know what I mean? I definitely think that could be almost like a generational-based thing. But we're just so used to having everything at our fingertips. You know what I mean? Right. And it's funny to say because I think around our age, when we were coming up, when we were young, it wasn't really like that. Like, I don't know about you. I didn't have a cell phone no. or at least a smartphone until I was... I don't know, maybe like later middle school, whatever it was. But coming up as a young kid, like I would still go outside and, you know, fucking yeah. fuck around with your friends. You know what I mean? You pick up some sticks. You have a great time. <laughs> Nowadays, it's just walk it's for all, all day. Like, walk around, <laughs> walk around, ride bikes. You know yeah. what I mean? You don't see really kids doing that anymore. It's, it's crazy to see the transformation because they're probably at home tapping away on an iPad, Nintendo Switch, whatever right. it is, dude. And it's a generational thing. But I, I like... The fact that we came up with that that less technology. You know what right. I mean? I remember being in middle school with like a flip phone, the Motorola's from Walmart. Yeah, hell you know yeah. what I mean? Day I, as you go, son. I can, <laughs> yes. Or I, I got like a minute card and I could text hell yeah. I could text five people and then I'd run out and I'm like, Oh, I can't contact anyone now. Like, right, right. You know right. what I mean? The good old days, but No, we were we were fortunate that we kinda uh came in the transition period. Yes. It was like we didn't grow up in technology. Like, my brother was born in 2004. So, I, mean, I think the iPhone was already out. I would say, yeah. Almost definitely. Yeah. Smartphones, fucking, you know, uh, things are just more advanced in 2004 than they were in 1997. 100%. Like, far more. Far more. Like, there was just a big jump somewhere, like, at the turn of the century or something, because it was 2000, maybe, futuristic yep. or whatever. But there was just a big jump. And you're right. When we were kids, like we didn't grow up, and, you know, with fucking iPhones and all these things. We learned about it in like our formative years when we were in high school and shit. Like hundred percent. And I feel feel like that's when we got integrated into it because I don't know. I mean, for me, dude, like I grew up on playing outside, or maybe you'd come inside for a little bit, play uh, Nintendo sixty four, like the OG PlayStation. Like right. that was about it, man. Like I didn't have a phone or anything like that, but it's crazy to see. 
Yeah, man. Nothing. Uh, I used to have the uh, original Xbox. I still have the Xbox One over there. I've um, I've only been Xbox like my whole life. I, I actually, you know what? I had a PlayStation One. PlayStation One and. What the fuck did I even play on there? I barely played. I had uh, a <laughs> <laughs> the PlayStation One and Two. There was the gray PlayStation One that you yeah, pop open the top. That's what I had. The PlayStation Two, which was just fat, and you put the disc in there. I think that's when I started playing like GTA, like right. stuff like that. I had the Slim PS Two. The Slim. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I remember those. Those were cool because they were real small. Uh, yeah, but the X, the fucking, the big dookie fucking <laughs> Xbox fat with the ones, green, yes. the green knob on the top, like <laughs> yes, that sh- that was mine. With the big fat controllers. Uh, you can yeah, you can was. get a controller for the new Xbox with that. That looks like that. That looks like that. That's some OG shit right there. Mm-hmm. Oh man, what else happened on that card? We skipped right over Rose Namajunas. We said we go back to we it, did. Uh, Thug Rose. Dude, I won some money on that on that card. You bet on that one? I bet on What were your bets? I bet on Smith. I did a straight bet on Smith. Okay. And then I did a straight bet on Hall. Yep. Straight bet on Rose and a straight bet on Jorge. I didn't think Jorge was gonna win. I only yep. bet him because of the odds. It was like plus four hundred. It was crazy odds. I was crazy. about to bet. Yeah. But I did have that feeling. I was like, I, I don't see him having Usman's number, dude. I just right. don't. Right. It's going to be a problem for a while yeah but then i did a parlay i parlayed them all and i shouldn't have put uh, jorge on the parlay because yeah. i didn't really think he'd win mm-hmm. so i won all the other ones but the but who's uh but fucking the straight bet with jorge and the parlay gotcha yeah but rose dude oh my god rose that fucking step step in head kick that was crazy on zhang dude and dropped it right on her ass <laughs> oh god she woke up and she was like what do you mean? She was heated. You're like, bro, you were done. Was that the fight right after that they tried to bring the translator in? Or am I mistaken? I don't know. No, I saw some clip. Different one? I'm not sure. You know what's funny, though? Sometimes with the translator, they, <laughs> yeah. like, don't need him. Oh, yeah. And they're just <laughs> no, standing like, there. Yeah. They, they, no, no. Like, they'll talk to the translator, and then he's like, no, I, I, I speak English. <laughs> like, the fighter. Oh, yeah. They're like, I don't, I don't need him. I can talk right to you, Joe Rogan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That shit's fucking great. Yeah, no, that was awesome to see. Um, and just with all those fights, um, I don't know if you've seen the clips of, um, or if you just saw it on live, all the clips of the... Uh, the reactions of the like Joe the Rogan commentary. and the rest of the commentary, yes, yeah, dude, dude. that it makes it almost better every time. It does. It does. What other like, no other uh, sport promotion has. sport? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes like there'll be like a home run and the guy will bug. Yeah. or like local. Like if you listen to Nesson during a soccer game, yes. and it's a home. They run, get all riled up. They'll bug yeah, out. Yeah. But like on a grand scale like that, that makes it like like you said so much better. It does. It's dope because they're like. They're freaking out because they really give a fuck about what's going yeah, on. Yeah, 100%. Like, it's not oversaturated yet. Like, sometimes you hear football guys, oh, well, and it sounds like the same thing's been going on in this sport for ages. You know yep. what I'm saying? We get to watch MMA, and it's, like, still growing. It's only been around since the, what, mid-90s or something as a sport? Not long. I mean, MMA, if you consider MMA, I mean, there's been different forms of it for so long, I feel like. Right. But, um, yeah, no, they're still on the come up. And on that note, I, I wanted to ask you, what do you think about um, uh, the whole, like, John Jones thing that's going on with him demanding more money? I saw some report that he asked for, like, 30 mil right. to make the fight at heavyweight with uh, Francis. Yeah. I think, uh, I think the fighters in the UFC, and this is an outside view... Obviously, Obviously, we're not the experts. Uh, I'm definitely not the expert. If anything, talk to Tony. Don't talk to me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It seems like they're grossly underpaid. Okay. Uh, That's like the, the, I don't know, the running thing in the MMA community that MMA fighters are grossly underpaid. They're making a whole lot of money and, you know, these guys aren't seeing what they should be seeing for it. Um, So take a guy like Conor McGregor in boxing. If he decided to do everything he did in MMA in boxing, would have made so much more money. So much more money. I mean, now he has the whiskey and everything. Holy fuck, my bad. These you pale ales are they getting to you? Yeah, yeah. Fuck. But no, I I looked into around. it. I looked into it to see to compare it to like other fights because mm-hmm. he, I saw this might have been just out of the blue, but I saw he asked for like thirty million to make the fight. So I was curious. So I started looking into other fights. I think McGregor only made. 
I mean, his purse for like the Khabib fight was like six to eight mil or something right. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I looked up his fight with um, Mayweather because that was huge. Uh, that's the probably the biggest payday he's had. Yeah. And his purse for that, you know, without incentives or whatever else, was thirty mil. Right. He and probably he, he probably made a hundred mil off that. Fight, I would I say with everything yeah. else accounted for involved. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. But for him to ask for that original thirty mil. I don't know. Do you think there there's money in the UFC like that? That's the thing is I don't think so. Who's getting paid thirty million in the UFC? Nobody. No one. No one. Nobody. I mean, John Jones also did, I guess, go to Twitter and say he didn't ask for that number. Yep. So who knows? But there's also the other day I I read something that showed his numbers. He doesn't sell like some of these other guys sell, dude. Like and, yeah. Like uh, you know, uh, he hasn't done a million pay per views very often maybe not even once like if if pay was based on merit and what you've done and accomplishments 100 percent, he should be the highest paid but so would have mighty mouse right he wouldn't have gotten traded yep so would you know plenty of other fucking guys yeah and but, I, on their side i feel like that's their defense of i have the credibility you know i've defended a title this many times i've been fighting in the ufc for this long but do you put ass? Do you sell? Seats? But yeah, yeah, do you sell? And that's dude. As much as people like hate Dana White, like that's kind of what he always reverts to. It's like if you sell, you'll make the money, and if not, like here's your number and fight or not. You know what that's I mean? That's what it is. And and I'm happy that there's more fighters mm-hmm. who are kind of seeing it for that, mm-hmm. and they're like, I'm gonna get in here. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make some noise, make some fucking mm-hmm. money. If I win the belt, that's only gonna be because I want to make some fucking money. Because yep. you obviously get paid more as a champ. You have more leverage and all these things. Yep. I want to promote. I want to do my fucking thing, smash people, and then get the fuck out before I start, you know, seeing, you know, light flashes and saying my name is in a fucking room. <laughs> all alone. Staring at the bright lights above. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. exactly. No, so yeah. I'm happy to see that. I'm happy that fucking Khabib dipped out of there. As much, as yeah. selfishly, as much as we all want to see him fight again. Yeah. Like, fuck it. What else does he have to do? As fans and everything, but... I, I think it's great when an athlete of any sport can leave on top and leave it yeah. a peak. You know what I mean? Like, you don't tarnish your reputation. You don't tarnish what you've done. You get the fuck out when you can. And I think I respect it. And he's still coaching for the UFC. Right. Or for different fighters, at least. You know what I mean? Yeah, he wants to start his own promotion. Does he? I forget what he wants to call it. It's like... Khabib Enterprises. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like Guerrilla MMA or something in Russia. Something crazy. Dude, if he starts... Br- like. Those Russians, like, his camp and his dad and, like, his presence in the UFC has brought in a whole new style of fucking, a whole new problem to to the fighters in the UFC. Those Russian guys who just can wrestle fuck you to death. Oh, yeah. They can just And they're dominating people already. Dominating people. So if he starts, if he he goes and and does that, starts that promotion in the UFC, or or, uh, starts his promotion in Russian, rather. Yep. He'll fucking just start breeding these guys. And they'll... They're a bunch of animals, man. Yeah, dude. Like, who knows? There might be an era of just strong-ass, grappling-ass motherfuckers just Just swapping. tearing people apart, dude. Mm. And it's a problem. It happens in the the Olympics, too. I don't know if you're... uh, I I know you're a wrestler and everything, but I don't know how much you keep up on... um, Olympic trials and all that shit. Not as much anymore, but yeah. why? Are they making their way into that too? Dominating they, that as well? They just happened. I mean, well, uh, uh, progressively through history, we've always had problems. The U.S. has always had problems against Russia. Yep. A lot of those Eastern European companies are fucking yeah, companies. A lot of those Eastern <laughs> European... <laughs> We're getting into business. We're getting into it. <laughs> A lot of them are, uh, are very good at wrestling for yeah. whatever reason. Wrestling, Because they're like wrestling bears in the middle of Russia, man. Nothing else to fucking do. <laughs> There's nothing else to do. Yeah. They start from when they're a child and up. They're just... I don't know. It's crazy. So historically for them, it's been like... We've been... Always had problems with them. Always had problems with them. But yeah, the the, the U.S. Olympic trials just happened. Um, Dake beat Burroughs finally for his spot. Really? On the Olympic team. Damn. Crazy, dude. Yeah, I didn't see that. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, U.S. is always always a fucking problem. You, I mean, you see it. There's, you know, it's in schools. Like, you, the United States wrestling pedigree is so much better than some of these other countries. Like, it is. 
Italy, fucking Britain. Like, they don't yep. care about wrestling. No, they don't care about shit. <laughs> you know what I'm no, saying? No. Like, that's why, you know, it's just random countries like Cuba. Nasty wrestlers and boxers, like, for some strange reason. It is weird. You yeah, know what I mean? it's just certain countries. Yeah, they yeah. implement it. And I don't know if it's how they come up and, mm. you know, it's like a, not a tradition to train and, like, do those type of things, but... You know what I mean? They train for so long in their home countries, and then they come. I feel like the United States probably has one of the greatest fight scenes of probably across the nation. You know what I mean? So to see people come in, and they just start tearing everybody up because they've just been doing it in uh, their home nation, wherever it is, bro. And they just come here and fuck shit up. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're a problem for fucking everybody. There's just certain, like, it's funny. There's just certain groups who specialize in certain things like you know like we just said some of those eastern european companies oh my god countries I'm back to the countries we're business minded people <laughs> right it's this uh juice lord hobo shit <laughs> it's, getting it's fucking me up right to the brain yeah they uh you know they're just good at fucking wrestling and 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 then you have like britain who's just nasty at boxing and being fighters and stuff like that yep and then you have uh, Brazil and South America where there's boxing of course like you know South American huge uh, on boxing right yeah. but there's also the jiu-jitsu and the grappling and uh, but then you have like these freak athletes that come from certain places yep. and a lot of the times it's Africa we're not being racist here but this is what no, it is absolutely not it's just a fact dude like who the fuck is walking around that you've ever seen that looks like Kamaru Usman or Francis Ngannou no way. No, like, I would run away, dude. Yeah. I'd run far away. <laughs> like, the way they are built yeah. is incredible. Right. It's like a it's like a different human specimen, bro. The way those dudes are built and just their endurance and how how nasty they are, dude, they yeah. fuck people up. It's in boxing too, like the uh what's his name? A Jagba. He's like a newer guy. He's just one piece in people in the first round, just yeah. boom. Nine he's got like eight or nine, like nine or ten wins. He's the guy, do you remember when it went viral? The guy, um, they touched gloves, they went to the corner, and the dude just walked out of the ring and said, fuck this. Yes, I did see that. The guy that was in the ring that he was fighting, that's a Jagba. He's that is dude him? He's the KOing people. That's, that would be me, in the corner of yeah. the ring, and I'd go, you know what, <laughs> fuck this shit, I'm out. Like, right. He knew it was coming, man. Right. It's, yeah. That it's was a different. fucking funny thing. That is, that is hilarious. That's not and if, since we're on the fight topic and viral things, um, I don't know if you've talked about this on the podcast yet. How did you feel about the whole Ben Askren and uh, Jake Paul bullshit? I didn't give Ben Askren a chance when I heard that was announced. I didn't either. And I think um, we did discuss this, but no, nah, dude, I didn't see it. Ch- I, I didn't want him to lose, obviously. Right. But I, I didn't think he had a chance really either. They gave him the one guy who he fucking had every opportunity to beat, and he fucking did just yeah, flatlined him, dude. <laughs> Probably one of the, you know what I mean, retired from MMA, basically. Olympic wrestler, which is great, but not great when you're in a fucking boxing match. Right. So those credentials go out the window. I mean, as an MMA besides fighter. maybe tying up, but yeah. yeah. Was decent as, as an MMA fighter. He did well, but retired. I Didn't he get a hip replacement like a year ago? Very recently. All right, it's like an older retired MMA Overweight. Father, overweight, dad yeah. bod, going in with this young 24-year-old who I guess has been training in boxing. I don't know. It, it's weird to see. You know what I mean? It definitely put a little bit of shame on uh, right. MMA because he's just been talking all that shit, dude. I don't know how many people had him winning. It's almost like, uh, like you know, not to refer it to politics, but it's almost yeah. like if people you know wanting Biden to be like the savior. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, and Ben Askren really like, was the wrong choice. Right, exactly. It's not such, to compare it, but... Right, right, right. right. <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> no, this is not a... Listen, we're not getting things. into politics here. Right. We're just bullshit, all right? good, wholesome fun. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, ben Askren actually turned into Joe Biden when it came to mental capacity when he got cracked. <laughs> he got... <laughs> The way he gets up. He was talking and he said, ah, forget it and just walked away. <laughs> yeah, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's it was almost a perfect storm of like the fighter in Ben Askren who thought he could just mop this kid because he has all these credentials. Yep. So, uh, you know, I was a, I was a 
Olympic wrestler, two-time national champion wrestler. I was a world champion, defended my belt in yep. Bellator and in one FC. Like, I shouldn't have a problem just boxing this kid up, even though I never really did much of it. And have no hands. Literally no hands. No like, hands. I think, I think if you took the gloves off, there'd be nothing there. It'd just be wrist. <laughs> oh, wrist. <laughs> I use these for forward. takedowns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I don't even believe... Or I don't think that Ben Askren even believed that he could win that fight. In the he, in the pre-fight like, interviews, whatever, he's like, if I lose, then I lose. Yeah. And it was kind of just like, all right, you know what I mean? Just kind of giving up on the idea, I guess. But he, he seemed like he had the mentality that I'm going to win or lose. And maybe it was just because he knew the money he was going to get paid at the end of the day. Like, what is... I don't know, dude. Ben Askren's already been knocked out in front of the whole world and the Masvidal knee. Like, right. what else do you have to lose? You know what I mean? Like, who gives a shit, really? Plus, the thing is, after you get hit with a knee like that, we, we spoke about it earlier about Jorge getting KO'd. Yes. You get KO'd bad like that, that takes fucking time off of your fight career, let alone your 100%. life. 100%, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like... I don't know if there's, like, science to it where, like, you know, a weaker jaw post that, but just even a mental game, man. After you have seen stars and you didn't – he probably woke up, didn't remember where he was at, like, right. that that takes something out of you. You know what I mean? That fearlessness of, I think, being in, in the octagon or just fighting, dude. I think it, it's definitely going to take something away from you. It happens Knock to Knock a couple screws loose. Yeah, it happens to guys that get hit a lot at, toward the, like – you see them, they're, they're too <clears throat> they're too deep in they're, they're trying to hold on. Like a guy like Anderson Silva. Yep. He gets <sighs> you blow on his fucking <laughs> chin, he's going down. He might go flying. Yeah. yeah like yeah. his his chin is dust. Mm-hmm. Chuck Liddell, another one. Chin is dust. You could flick us. So you get hit by a shot like that, I mean, how many more shots are you gonna take on your chin after that? Not so many. And plus, like you said, Jake Paul took it seriously. To him, it's a serious fucking thing. To a real fighter, like, or a supposed real fighter, whatever you're, you're, you want to say. To a guy like Ben Askren, who's actually fought at the highest level. Yep. It, it doesn't even compare. So I don't think so. He didn't give a fuck, and Jake gave a lot of a fuck. A lot of fucks. He, he knew, like, it would be a big thing. Training camps, put on a whole show for the thing. Mm-hmm. The ridiculous robot, whatever the hell that was. But Dude, I thought that was fake when I was I like, did too. Is that thing CGI behind him? Um, it's huge. <laughs> dude, I saw different things that there was actually someone in it that was controlling it or it was... That's what all, I thought it was. All electronic. I don't know. It's it's just crazy. And it's crazy to see this mix and this blend of these... That social media influencers. or They don't even have to be social media. Just influencers. Right. Kind of making their way into like different fields of like boxing. You know what I mean? Just a lot of different things. And I, I guess the boundaries are just being pushed, man. But... I guess Jake Paul's at the the front of it, man. It's being sold as entertainment, essentially, because they're having performances. Yes. You don't have, what is a football game? We have the cheerleaders come out in the middle. Like, yeah. It doesn't right. happen <laughs> in boxing, you know what no, I'm saying? No. Or, or fighting or any of that stuff. They don't. There's no bands or anything. So they had, in my opinion, pretty poor taste in putting a guy like Justin Bieber out there. Yeah, that was weird. But what the fuck do I know? They know who their audience is. They're yeah. getting a bunch of young kids who are like, oh, Jake Paul's fighting this fucking stupid fat guy with curly hair. <laughs> they don't even know his name. Yeah, like, and, and they're going to be like, you know, whatever, and they're going to bring their stupid girlfriends, and they're all 16 yep, and 17, yep. and they're all going to sit and And watch. it's a hype show. It's a hype show, yeah, dude. Exactly. Look, Snoop Dogg, he's smoking a joint. Snoop like. Dogg, Pete Davidson, <laughs> yeah. who was absolutely hilarious on that. I don't know if you heard, um, right before, like, the fight starts, um, like... You hear the other announcers like, all right, we're, we're going to get into it. And Pete Davidson just yells out and he's like, holy shit, I'm about to come like on live TV. <laughs> and everyone just blew it off like it was nothing or even commented on it until I'll, I, I saw it during it. And I was like, no one's going to say anything. Yeah. And it's crazy because in any other serious fight setting, boxing, MMA, any other tournament, dude, like that would be unheard of. You right. know what I mean? It's this crazy blend of like entertainment, influencers making their way into like an actual sport. I don't know. Strange. I, I think I credit part of it to like um, just where we're at in like 2021, man. Like I think we're such a internet like, you know, influencer, like everything's like online now. I don't know. I think the pandemic did something to people where, you know, people are plenty comfortable just sitting at their home and just watching whatever the fuck it yeah. is now. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Whatever sells, whatever is going to get people to tune in or, you know what I mean, views, all that shit. It's just, it's different now. You know what I mean? I read a book a little while ago, probably around Thanksgiving. Um, it was called The Third Wave, or it was like a guide. No, no, it was called The Third Wave, a guide for the modern day entrepreneur or some shit like that. Yep. And I, I got the book a while ago, and I never really read it, but it was written by the guy who started AOL. Which was throwback, yeah. Which was a huge fucking thing back yeah. in the day. Huge, and I remember I was pissed because my parents wouldn't let me have it. Right, but exactly. everybody else did. It was just like MySpace, but anyways. Right, I made a name, <laughs> everything. You could, uh, yeah, paste yeah. The messaging and shit. Yep. But um, yeah. So I read that book, and it was like he was on that cusp of where, uh, right around the time when we were little little kids, or yep. just around being born or so. Yep. He was on that cusp of. Okay, we're like in the early stages of technology where we're living, we're living here, and then technology is like over here. Like we, we're all doing our thing, but not everybody has a computer, not everybody has internet, not everybody has these technology, not everyone has AOL, like yep. you said. Some people still have dial up or all these fucking things. Some people don't have computers at all. I remember no, growing no. up with kids in high school, in, in elementary school, didn't have computers, nothing like that yeah. in your house. I remember so, going to school with those fat Mac computers that would take forever to load. Right. Like, really. Big, oh, fat asses on the back of them. Like, the TVs. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're huge. Weighed a thousand pounds. Took 20 minutes to even load into, like, the normal desktop screen. Right. And then he grew. He, he writes more into his book about how he started to grow into the second wave. Yeah. Right around where AOL was starting to... Um, uh, it was right in the time where AOL was starting to take off in terms of investors and getting money. Yep. And it spread until right where AOL kind of died out. Yeah. And he credits all that to not being as prepared as he should and not being as adaptive as he should to the second wave of technology. Yeah. And now it's starting to be integrated into our life. So before it was here mm. and here, now it's kind of in the middle, right? Now it's in our lives now everybody 100%. has computers everybody uses technological shit whatever and now he he's, he predicts the third wave which is coming you know fairly soon now you know what i'm saying i think he wrote the book in 2016 which isn't that long ago nope so he talks about how life is going to be the third wave of technology is now here's life and now we're going to be in technology to where life was before it was being integrated, now it is completely integrated and everything we do is going to be tracked to the, to the T, good and bad. Yeah. Where like, you know, a good example would be scientists are able to track things now because something like Neuralink, right? We're able yep. to track brain waves that create Alzheimer's or something. Yep. So that's a, a good thing, but there's also the bad the security issues, all that, that type of stuff. So that was just an interesting read, and I think we're kind of either approaching it or really in that era. I think spot on everything you just said. Um, you're going to have to t like give me that read later. I want to yeah, look yeah, into yeah. that. But I think that's 100% what we're heading to or what we're already in, man. I think like automation, you know, uh, tracing. Dude, it, it's already here, and um, I believe in a sense a lot of it has to do with you know, we said moving like into the two, like into 2000, there was that wave of yeah. technology kind of just kicked up out of nowhere. Now we're moving into 2020, now 21. And, you know, maybe with the timing, it's just like that. But I, I see a huge sense of, especially with everything that happened with like COVID. And it was like, all right, now you walk into a restaurant and they say, can I get your name and number for contact tracing? Sure. So things like that are, um, I know people when they got COVID that, got called by the Board of Health and needed a rundown of their entire life. Where right. have you been in the past fucking 68 days? Who have you seen? Who have you... Fucking what Nazi it? Gestapo knocking at your door. <laughs> Harboring <laughs> Jews? Like, <laughs> you got COVID? That's, that's what that shit is. Knock, knock. It's a G BGB. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Seriously, but... No, I think we're fully headed towards it, if not already into it, man. I mean, in a lot of senses of... You know, people rely on technology so much already. Um, you know, with our phones, we were already talking about it. How often are people on their phones? And, right. you know, uh, just automation is going to be huge, I think. Um, you know, automatic driving cars, already a thing. That's Look at Tesla, thing. bro. Hell yeah. You know, AI. 
AI, huge, huge scary as fuck. Scary, <laughs> dude. There's movies about it, and it's crazy because but we just don't care. And I think <laughs> we don't. We just let it happen. We're like, oh, we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. But dude, I really think we're heading towards like a point where it's like it's happening. Like all these futuristic movies, all these sci-fi type things. We're really getting there. Very and similar. usually it starts with some crazy uh, like global disease pandemic. Right. Next thing you know, you're getting you know all this tracing, all the shit that's going on. But it's only going to keep advancing. Technology is never going to stop. Right. So it, it, the question, like you said, is just like at what point is technology running life or we're just living in their world, dude? You know what yeah. I mean? Well, the funny thing is, is as much as we say... <clears throat> The, as cliche it is, as it is, as much thing as much as things change, the more they stay the same. Yep. Probably pay Modern Warfare too. Captain Price says yes, that. Yes, sir. In the <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I wonder. Now, this is just something that I wonder. We had a very similar. Now, this is the 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 new twenties, right? Yep. Nineteen twenties. Yeah, yeah. In 1918 or 1919, whenever they had the influenza epidemic. Yes. And then they went on to have. 10 years or nine years of everybody having a ball and everyone great prosperity and a huge jump because that's typically what happens with economies. They, yeah. Something shits on them. They come back and, and you know, do something great. <clears throat> and then what had happened was now they're all the way up here. Everyone's having a great time in the twenties. The mm-hmm. depression happens, the wars, all this stuff. I'm just wondering if something similar would happen because of how, big the the drop off was because of the pandemic yes because you know it it's almost like you pull the further you pull the slingshot the higher up it's gonna go absolutely but it also means that it'll fucking come down pretty even hard hard too yeah so i I actually wanted to bring this like bring this topic up to you because um seeing that you know summer's around the corner and um with all these vaccinations that are going out, everybody's getting vaccinated. People are running by the masses to get vaccinated. Right. And you're already seeing this huge fluctuation of people trying to travel again, going to restaurants, yep. you know, walking around without masks, like masks on. And I believe that this summer is, is going to be like that, that heightened, like you just said, in the 20s, they got all excited and they lived, you know, partied, lived life because, wow, we just made it out of this epidemic. Yeah. So what else are we going to do now besides celebrate? So I think this summer, I, I foresee people going a little crazy, a lot of traveling happening. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think things will hopefully slowly start to go back to normal. But it's like, what could be on the other side? Like you're saying, you know, if we're all going to go crazy this summer, you know, white boy summer. I don't know if you heard <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> it's but, um, you know what I mean? Who knows? I think everyone's going to go a little crazy this summer with traveling. Mm-hmm. People want to live life again, and they're opening businesses again everywhere, for the most part. They're even opening them again, and they're saying in New York City, they're about to open 100% June 1st. Yeah, I saw that. So that's like the epicenter of where a lot of shit started, with COVID, or just where a lot of things happened. So it's it's going to be crazy to see, and I'm very interested to see how it plays out. Um, I know I want to live normal life again, but, you know, should we still be cautious? Should we just go back to it? Right. And what are going to be the repercussions, you know what I mean? It's interesting because there's, uh, you know, there's states who, it's hard to say don't give a fuck because... Florida. <laughs> <laughs> right. But is it not giving a fuck if things are going normal? Like, and going well? Right. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, Florida, Texas... Arizona, some of these places are just like, some people are going to die, some people aren't going to die, most people aren't going to die, right? We're going to yep. fucking work through this. And then there's other states who, or like Canada, shut down fucking completely. Like, 100%. You can barely leave, like... No one's coming in or out. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's, you know, and it's, it all depends where, where I guess you're at. Agreed. Yep. And I mean... I don't know. I feel like the places that are, have been open are doing decently well. And I don't know. I don't I don't know the numbers or anything, but I know a, a shit ton of people are in Florida right now over the past few months because they've been open. Right. It's spring break time. Having a ball. Having a damn ball. Yeah. I was there myself. Can't yeah. lie. There you go. But um, it's, like, it's going to be interesting like, whether we're just slowly going to keep declining out of this thing or you know if it's just going to pop up again. But at the same time, I think... Human instinct 
you know, humans can only be caged animals for so long, and right. we were put away for so long, dude. That you how know, long can you run this for? How long? You know what I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and dude, just everything that that has happened in the past year, the craziness. It's like, you know, people are gonna do it whether you like it or not. Right. You know what I mean? People like humans aren't meant to just be put away. Um, they want to travel. They want to interact. They want to go to restaurants. They want to go to concerts all those things you know what i mean you're not gonna stop them if they want to go right especially if things are just happening regardless of state rules it's happening man like people are gonna go out you watch the news now it's like all they got left is just the the covid at the end like some countries saying that there's a wave this country locking down that's all they got left to talk about they don't know what else the fuck to talk (laughs) about they're like this is all we've had for a year like what do we got now yeah there's no more trump to talk about there's you know covid's Hopefully getting towards the end, and it's... Yeah. Now we got to distract from about? our president now. So it's <laughs> we got like, a senile president. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was saying this to John today. I feel like the pres- like the, the U.S. is like the Patriots. They're in one of the... They're like one of those teams that are in the reconstructive years. Like, they're like in the background. No <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. You know, it's the Patriots, dude. You know, we're the Patriots, but... No, that's a good analogy, and... I don't know, man. It's a, it's a weird time still. It's a scary time, but I, I like to believe we're coming out of it. And hopefully, you know, we see the light of things soon. People get to go out again. Right. People start fucking being nice to each other again. Another it's all that shit, man. Another thing that I think is going to um, kickstart some pretty cool shit, at least in my mind, yep. um, is and, and a boom as well, is um, how everybody's realizing how fragile things are and how a lot of people went and took their livelihoods and how they make money in their own hands or at least um, used, like we were saying, used technology in a way that they could uh, make some extra money. Yeah. Whether it be starting some sort of a small business or, you know, selling ads or something or doing some shit like that. A lot yeah. of people found a lot of different ways to make some money and get creative. So I think... A lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of businesses are going to come out of this fucking... You think doing well? I think I think a lot of startups are going to come, come out of this. Startups that like, basically started during the pandemic is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think people got really creative with ways to make money and just ways to make income because everyone was hurting so hard. And it's awesome to see, you know, people getting, you know getting creative about it and, you know, how are we going to make money? What can we do? You know, you see a lot of people even selling things on, you know, their social medias that they're making. Right. It's finding those talents or skills you have that, you know, you can make money off of. And that's cool to right. see. So hopefully on the other side of it, you know what I mean? They're still doing well. I don't know about a lot of the businesses that were hurting bad before. I mean, I think a lot of them have probably sadly been rifled through. Like if you didn't make it through it, you didn't make it through it already. Right. I think, you know, there is light on the other side in those small businesses, Hopefully now we'll start seeing, you know, profits and doing well again, not, you know, struggling to pay just mortgages and the bills. Right. But no, it was definitely creative to see and or just the way anyone was making money because you saw from the top down, it doesn't matter like how much money you have, your social status, everyone struggled and had to find a new way to make money. Right. And um, one thing I think was really cool that came out of it. As we're on a podcast, we're going to talk about podcasts. <laughs> right. Um, a lot of celebrities, and we talk about comedians all the time, took on the podcast world by storm. Right. And I'll tell you what, it's dude. Huge. I think maybe even since, you know, pandemic time or around the time that I got to come on your show last time, I have gotten so involved with watching podcasts. And we said, like, when you're sitting there eating lunch, you have your phone sitting there watching right. them. That is fully me. Like, I'm falling <laughs> to it, victim to it when I'm, like... Sitting there eating something when I'm sitting there doing nothing, driving. whatever, driving all the time. Dude, I bought a stand in my car just so I could put it on there and, right. and like listen and watch. And um, it's, it, it's cool to see what they did. You know what I mean? Right. How often are you like, I'm so fucking sick of music. I got to put something else on. Yeah. Like and I, I, I listen to a lot of music, but I do get to that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's almost like you get in this trance when you put on a podcast that you can just listen to someone talk. And you're not even fully registering what they're saying sometimes, but, right. you know, it's on. And, and you know what I mean? Sometimes you pay more attention, but um, I've definitely gotten into, um, like, the community, like, the comedy community of, like, um, take it for probably, like, most people that have been on, like, Joe Rogan's experience and, like, got big because they had, like, one episode with him. Like, right. Or at least in the podcast world. Like, I watch a lot of uh, Theo Vaughn. 
pirate. Oh, hilarious, dude. Just so the way he talks. He can I, read the phone book. And dude, it'd be hilarious. You know what yeah. I mean? He's just a character. I don't even think he has to be that funny. Uh, but yeah, him. Um, I got into watching like Burt Kreischer, Tom Segura. Those dudes are hilarious. Have you um, got into Tim Dillon at all? Tim Dillon, dude. Tim yeah. Dillon. He doesn't give so a fuck. Not about dude. anything. Not about anything. <laughs> and he's like this dude from New York. From and Long Island. Bro. Dude, I, from Long Island. Yeah. And dude, he was like a cokehead at one point. Was like a real estate agent. Like a sketchy real estate yeah. agent. And his story is... Subprime mortgages. Subprime. Like. <laughs> Help the crash during the F- Yes, during yeah. the worst time you could sell, like do yeah. that. And dude, his story is so funny. Tim Dillon's hilarious. He doesn't give a shit about anything. No, he tells he people directly how it is. Oh my god. Um, you ever hear? You ever? Would you listen to him when he was? Um, he was at war with those Airbnb women. I was just gonna say that. Oh one. my <laughs> god, dude. <laughs> and we can say this, dude. He like him describing how he went to war with two lesbians who had like right. the worst Airbnb of all time. Right. And we bugged it, out, dude. Bugged out, and he said it on so many podcasts, and I know that because I fucking watch them all. Right, dude. Talked about it for so many, but um, just that whole community of people, like uh, obviously Joey Diaz. Right, I watch a lot of his show. Now. Yeah, kind of on his own wave. Yeah, yeah. But I love watching him too. Um, but yeah, like to see that genre, like comedians that couldn't do venues anymore. You can't. Mm-hmm. You can't do any events. You know what I mean? Kind of just move to the podcast world. Right, it's cool to see. You know what I mean? That's been that's like one of the big communities that it's been huge for. Yeah, it's for comedians. Sure. Like even before the pandemic, mm-hmm. because it's just another platform to be funny on. Like it is. You just have other comedians, a bunch of comedians in a fucking room talking. Like it's yeah. gonna be funny one yeah. way or another. You know, because they're all just roasting on each other, or, and you get to see them like in a in a different light. Because when they're on stage. They already have, like, a set thing they're going to talk about, right. make jokes about. But when you see them just in a natural habitat, just bullshitting. Speaking candidly and shit. It's mad funny. Yeah. It's hilarious. It makes the funny moments funnier. Yeah, because it's organic. Yeah, like, you watch, like, Joey Diaz just start to get real intense. You ever watch... What's the- up, cocksuckers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, ever, you ever watch the episode where there's, like, five of them? It's like... Brendan Schaub, Eddie Bravo, Joey Diaz, Joe Rogan. Yes. And they're all in there and they're talking about like the rankings and all this stuff and they're talking about yep. um, who Conor McGregor's going to fight next. Yes. And he starts talking about Tyron Woodley. He's like, that's the fucking scene. <laughs> like, it's fucking Dude, awesome. Dude, so on it. He, another thing, he can't say any of the fighters' names right and he just goes off on this Stay whole thing. Pick. This one should fight this one and fucking <laughs> And they're like, Joey, like, you're not saying it right. Really. He's like, Sarone, that guy's good. Like, Sarone. Serona, <laughs> so funny, dude. Oh man, yeah. Podcast, like, again, there's some, you know, there's some people who use it as a creative outlet, and then there's some people who use it as a fucking extension to what they already do. Yeah. Like, and for comedians, it's perfect. For any gig worker, I think it's perfect. If you're an artist, if you're any, I think you should do it anyway. Yeah, and people will sit there and just listen to you talk. I mean. People will sit here and listen to us talk. Like, what the fuck do we know? Right, we don't know anything. But um, I was going to ask you. I, obviously, like I said, I'm on the whole comedy podcast wave. Yeah. But we also have, um, you know, the common interests of, like, business, finance. You right. Know, like I said, I'm in advertising. But um, do you listen to, like, any business-style podcasts or, like, um, any, any like anything like that? Yeah, there's one uh, that I was listening to for a little bit. I haven't in a while. Maybe I will now that you brought it up to me. Yep. Um, I want to say it was called like the Good Morning Podcast or something, but it was through Wall Street Journal. Okay. Um, I credible, a, credible. Yeah. Wall Street Journal, I've always said is to get news in general, like obviously to get finance news, it's great, but to get yep. news in general, very, very unbiased. They are good. And I follow them on Instagram and I get to see like what they put out on there at least, but yeah. So I used to listen to that one and that was like short episodes. They'd be like from... 15 to 35 minutes or something. So they're quick. You can bang them out. Yeah. Um, so those those were good um, if you're trying to keep up on current events, yep. vernacular, finance, those type of things. Um, I'll look it up in a second what it's actually called. But I also listened to the Jordan Belfort podcast, which is a little less for the finance thing and more yep. for the you know the character of him. Okay. But he does have episodes where he talks about, you know, he talked about the Wall Street bets thing and the GameStop, and he was able to kind of enlighten and say how all this happened. So, um, 
Yeah, for that, I do have a couple. Uh, I, I used to listen to another one. I forgot what it was called, like Market Movers or some shit like that. Yeah. But I didn't, it was more of like a marketing um, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. No, I want to look into them just because, like I said, I listen to fucking podcasts all the time. But right. I also want to make use of the time that I'm just spending sitting there listening to podcasts when I could be getting educated. You know what I mean? Actually learning something from it. Not to say I don't learn a thing or two there, but I'm more of just, you know, a lighthearted podcast. It's funny, you know, just something to listen to, but right. something I want to look into. I mean, as long as it doesn't have to do with like the fucking, the Gary V's of the business world, dude. I stopped listening to him a fucking There are while so ago. many bullshit entrepreneurs out there. And I'm not saying he hasn't made his way and has credibility, but like... Dude, there's just some bullshit out there. Like The way he goes about it. You know what I mean? It is how you go about it. And between that and just, I don't know, you'll see like the, the people on Instagram, social media. They're like, oh, I made fucking $10 million in a year doing this while they're sitting on like a Lamborghini. And you're like, dude, like it wasn't that easy. And like right. you're selling bullshit to people is what you're doing. It's never that fucking You know what easy. I mean? It was never that easy. Yeah. You're going to sell some bullshit scheme to all these young kids that think that they're going to get rich quick. And it's like, it's just not that. Or Gary Vee yelling at you saying, you're a fucking loser, this, that, the other Right, thing. like he, he, <laughs> he makes it almost sound like it's easy as fuck to go yeah. and just do. Like anybody in any situation can just do it. You can just do it. That mom who has three fucking kids and she's trying to be a nurse. So she goes to school at night and works in the morning. Oh, yeah. She can Who's start- watching the fucking kids, Gary yeah. V? Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah. Don't listen to these people. And Gary V's out here saying, you mean to tell me you don't have time on Sundays to go g- garage fucking garage sale? No, I'm praying, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm praying to fucking make it to my next meal. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's one of those like reach for the stars, a little yeah. almost unrealistic. But the one I was talking about is called Streetwise. Barron's Streetwise with Jack Hugh, I think. Hugh, Hugh, whatever. Okay. So that that's the one that is like finance legit. Like you'll learn some shit off that one. Awesome. Streetwise by Barron's. All right. I will absolutely be texting you probably 30 minutes after I leave here going, hey, what was the name of that podcast yeah, yeah, again? Yeah, yeah. But I, <laughs> I appreciate it, it you on I'm the trying way to get up. into it. Seriously. Yeah, no, it's a big thing that when you're downtime, it's so much easier to just like, watch some shit that you don't have to pay attention to yeah. like like a food video or a Conor McGregor talking to shit video like yep. it's just so much easier but one thing I learned in my short time as an advisor was mm-hmm. you have to take even your downtime as an opportunity to learn some shit yes um, and I think for people who are in the entertainment realm this is I guess more or less entertainment I don't know you guys entertained uh, yeah you fucking <laughs> better you better be fucking entertained <laughs> um but more or less, I, I read, I heard a quote somewhere where it's like, to be, an, to be an entertainer, you have to be entertained. So it's almost the same thing. Like, if you want to build some shit, you need to be informed. Yeah. If you want to learn, you got to fucking take the time to learn. To learn. And that's, that's like what I'm trying to get on, man. I mean, I think now more than ever, I mean, we talked about it on the last podcast. Like, I'm a college student coming to the end of it. But, I mean, a lot of free time with the sense of just like Zoom calls You know, I'm about to even start, you know, a new job soon remotely. I feel like a lot of people are just spending a lot of time in home, just at home, you know, not doing a lot. And it's like, how can I start making more, like, just be more productive in a day? You know what I mean? I have this downtime. What can I do with it besides, you know, sit around with, yeah, fucking off, listen, (laughs) an easy listen podcast. You know what I mean? I like to laugh at the podcast and everything, but you know what I mean? Stuff just through the day that makes you more productive and you know, actually getting you somewhere and you learn, like building knowledge, you know what I mean? Especially that I'm like trying to enter my career soon. I'm like, all right, I kind of want to start getting my shit together here. You know, what can I do to advance myself, make myself a smarter person? You know what I mean? Past four years, like college, you know, you're dicking around, you're getting it done, but you're dicking around. You're not really like doing much outside of class to learn. You know what I mean? It's just those little things that I want to start trying to like, just to be more productive, a more well-rounded person. You know what I mean? Right. It's funny you say that because, like, it's true. The first year and a half and the last year of college, yep. you're pretty much fucking off. You got, you're like, fucking off. Yeah. You got. You are fucking around. You're <laughs> hanging out with your friends. Yeah. You got you're a doing year and bullshit. A half. You got a year and a half to prove that you learned some shit yeah. in there somewhere. <laughs> and that's it. And I'll tell you what, this whole Zoom university, I, I, I've spoken to plenty of people, like peers of mine and myself, 
I don't think a lot of these kids are retaining what they're being taught, dude. Oh, hell no. It's on a computer. We're going to have some dumbass kids walking around here. Stupid. Dumbass like, adults. Might, like, our generation might be stupid because of this. Right. Not, not entirely, <laughs> but it's a broad statement. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you know, you're not getting the full benefit out of what you went into it for in the first place. Right. So, you know, it, it's such a weird time. I hope that, you know, just across the board, schools, colleges, you know, go back to a bit of a normal setting, you know, in the following year and everything. But I'll tell you what, I have not retained very much within the past year of... Uh, I couldn't imagine it. I don't think... It's fucked. I mean, I would finish... I'd finish school regardless, but it would be fucking hard during Zoom. Because part of it, again, part of the things that you get good at or the things that you... Yeah, I guess succeed at, excel at. You find a ritual in it. And there were times where I almost liked the fact that I was getting out of work at a certain time and going to the library and working mad late till they closed, being yep. the last guy out of there. Yeah. Or some days just being the first guy in the parking lot. Yep. First guy mm-hmm. in the library, there all day. Like, there's just something about that. So if I'm just doing Zoom all day, I can just fuck off. Like, I don't. You know Dude, I mean? and it, yeah, and I mean, going to class, at least it gives you that sense of accomplishment. I did something today. You know what I mean? Yeah. I made it to class. I, you know, it's the ritual. You keep, you stay disciplined. It is. I yeah. think people work best on a routine, or at least I think I do. And, you know, in the era we're in, I don't think people have a long attention span. You try to get them on a, a Zoom call for fucking film class right. or whatever it is, it's, they're not going to be able to pay attention for more than what, fucking 20 minutes? You know what I mean? And that's like more or less adults in college. Yeah. Imagine fucking kids, elementary school, middle school, like what are they learning online? Yeah. Nothing. To keep a kid, like an elementary school kid engaged, there has to be something going on in the class. Always. They you have too be, much oh, energy. I'm passing a ball and asking questions or yep. something, the teacher or whatever walking around. You can't be in your fucking house. Like the kids are gonna get restless eventually. Oh yeah. Breaking chairs and Dude, around. to be like a fly on the wall of like a Call it like a third, fourth grade Zoom call. Can you imagine the fuckery that goes on? Kids are probably hopping off screen left and right. You don't even know where they're going. Just like craziness. And how often are they being watched? Probably not that often. A lot of parents fucking... They're like, get in a class, Jimmy. Toss them in a fucking room in front of a computer and do whatever, dude. Or they're not even there. Like I personally, when I got out of school, when I would get out of school... yeah. I went to my grandparents. Yeah, no, there, me too. If there was no school, I'm going to my grandparents. Yep. And they're only going to watch you for so fucking long. Yeah. Or maybe some kids stay home on their own and there's no fucking parents at all. They could be fucking <laughs> next, next to the TV. Back to doing drugs. They're doing drugs on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, No, exactly. whatever it is. But you're, you're not far off. And I meant to correct myself. I don't think college, people that are in college at the moment, higher education are going to be the ones that suffer the most it's going to be the youth yeah. that between – they're not learning. They're not going to retain these things. They're not in a social setting. I think when you're young, you kind of establish how the world works. Right. Because you're around so many people. You figure out like – You build your identity. Just all those things. You build their identity. You figure out how to like be involved with other kids, your peers, whatever it is. And it's, it was all taken away for a while. So these young kids – they're super fucking weird in a couple of years. I wouldn't be surprised. It's just going to add to what we were talking about. Yeah. The tech stuff. Yes. People aren't going to, people are only going to meet like dating wise. It's going to be fucking on the phone. Yes. I remember being a kid at summer camp, right? Mm-hmm. I remember having a camp counselor. His name was um, Andrew Hogan. Shout out Andrew Hogan. I hope you hear this. He was a Shout cool, out Hogan. He was a cool fucking guy. <laughs> but, <laughs> he was I, the man. I remember he saying something that I completely agreed with. And he's like, if if I ever have to go online to meet, you know, somebody. This, this was when this was when I was a kid and this was when the dating sites were hot, eHarmony, all this shit. And he's like, if I ever have to do that shit, fucking blow my brains out. Yep. I don't even want to fuck with that. Like, I'm going to get catfished and all this bullshit. Soon, dude, Tinder, all these apps, like, that's what it is now. People are like, oh, I met that person on Tinder. Yeah, we met on Tinder. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tinder. Like, it's just different. Yeah, now it's, so. like, almost welcome. Like, that guy was like, fuck that. I want nothing to do with that. Now it's like, yeah, how, you, how, did, you, how did you meet that person not on Tinder? You know what I'm saying? No, 100%. It, yeah, so many things have changed that are going to change with technology. And, I mean, even, even dating, like you're saying, will 
but it already is the next wave of things. You meet someone online and that's how it goes. I'll tell you what, I've had a 0% success rate on Tinder. So if you see me on this, give me a shout out. Yeah, right. So did I. There's some people for myself, like I, I'm a social person, very face to face interactions work for me. Yeah. Whether it's just with people talking, you know, girls, whatever it is. Um, but you know, I think there's some people that might stick to the old school ways and there's some people that thrive on that stuff. And if you do shout out to you, but, um, it, it is crazy to see the transformation of just everything, every aspect from schooling, like you're saying, dating, just everything. And right. Dude, we're going into that fucking vortex. The technology is going to run it before we know it. Which is why we have the edge. Because I always said that old school is like, it has the edge. Like, Oh, it does. Like, if we're in a world of Tinder dates, yep. we'll say, and uh, you know, a guy like you or me who's a little more in tune. I, I was always raised by older people. I don't know about yeah. you, but my parents are older. My dad's like 62 or something. Yep. Like. I've always been around older people. So it's like, if you approach somebody that way, they're going to be taken aback. Like, wait, this motherfucker is like sitting, standing here talking to me? Like, everybody's on their phone. Look like, at how weird is that? All I see is the top of everybody's heads. <laughs> and this motherfucker's coming up and speaking. Like, And no, you see that. You genuinely, between that and this, this phase of, you know, people were away in the pandemic for so long and coming on the other side, sometimes you talk to people and just like, they give you the wide eyes and you're just like, I'm just, I'm just trying to talk to you. I'm just yeah. trying to engage in a conversation here. And like, I don't know, man, social, socially, I think it's going to be a bad thing because oh, there's good yeah. and bad to it. Socially, I think it's going to be a very bad thing. I think people are going to like lose like personal skills. You know what I mean? You're so used to being behind a phone talking to people or whatever it is. But um, no, I'm, I think we're both blessed that we came up with a time we at least built on those skills of like, yeah. you know what I mean? You talk to people face to face or you know, just outside of that whole realm of, let me just text you, bud. Like, yeah, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I didn't have text for the longest fucking time in my house. Like, my parents were like, fuck that. For as long as you could. Now you have to get text. Yeah. You can't just... But for as long as we could, it was like, you just... What do you need text for? To talk to fucking people all day. Just that's what call I'm them if you need them and that's it. And we got old-fashioned parents. We come from yeah. Portuguese households. <laughs> that technology... Ethnic. Yeah, a little ethnic. Yeah. Like, my parents thought, no, there was no discussion. Like, I'd be like, can I get a phone? No. Can I have a MySpace? No. Can I have a Facebook? No. <laughs> Family guy? No. <laughs> yeah. Did I do most of those things behind their back? Yes. yes. But that's the fun of the game. You know, totally. nowadays, a fucking probably 10-year-old is handed an iPhone, and it's like, there Anything. you go. You can watch. You can watch Just people die on that fucking thing. You can watch whatever the fuck you want. Just right. good luck. Which is the other thing. Like, this access to everything. Dude, I remember being a kid and being like, a topic that we would talk about was like, uh, no, they can't show people dying on TV. That doesn't happen. Nobody show, And it still doesn't happen for the most part. They yep. don't show them dying on TV. Yeah, yeah. But you don't need it. You just go on your phone. You, you don't need it. You don't need it at all. It doesn't need to be on TV. You can just you it, go on fucking Facebook and you can see a guy killing two people in the street. Yes. And dude, like you don't even need television anymore. It's all on the internet. Everything's on the internet. And that's a big reason why, dude, I deleted my Twitter. Because right. I don't know if you're on Twitter, maybe for the show and everything. I love Twitter. Do you? <laughs> dude, it is a wormhole. Yeah. Oh, fuck shit, dude. There is terrible things on there. Everything in between. There is some cool stuff, but I had to take myself out of the realm of Twitter. Like, I'm already on my phone enough as it is, dude. Right. So I, like, try to stay away from it. The last thing I saw on Twitter that made me delete the app altogether in my account to scroll in one day, I come across a video. It is, I think they're on the New York like City subway or whatever it is, and there's this old ass lady. She's just sitting on the train going wherever she may be going, and this dude comes up to her and literally starts like stomping her out, dude. Oh, man. And I was just up. like, this is this is where Twitter's at? Yeah. Or whatever it was. I was like, I don't need to see this content. I got, I got to get out of this. You know what I mean? I try to... Already limit my screen time. It's hard enough as is, but no, I'm off Twitter, man. See, that's how I felt about Facebook. I'm off Facebook. Yeah, I, I try not to go on Facebook, Facebook at all. Yeah, um, I'll log on just every once in a while because some people, in my family or somebody, will message me on there. But yeah, I'm rarely fucking on there, and it's part of that reason. Like, 
it's funny because before you could look at fuck, you could find fucked up videos like they used to have like best gore dot or uh, yeah. whatever it was called, and that's just kind of fun to look at. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. People light themselves on fire, and jumping off buildings, falling off nice. roofs and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Right, but it was like you had to go to like a sketchy site for it. You had to know about it. Oh yeah. Now you don't even need to know about it. Like you just be scrolling. You just have to scroll. That's yeah. all it takes. You don't even have to look for it. Someone else retweeted it already. It's already on the, your fucking page. It's there. Right. Yeah. And then when it says they try to say like they're gonna like censor things like send uh the, they'll put like the sensitive what is it sensitive say? content. Sensitive all you content. gotta do is see the video. That's right. You gotta click. And and to an asshole like me, that's like. I'm totally clicking on that. Now I'm more intrigued because <laughs> I, I need to know it. what's behind this. Yeah. I want to know what this is. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be an interesting, like we were just talking about social and everything. It's going to be interesting what the term social is going to turn into at one point. 100%. Like, are you still social as a person if you're talking to people or are you a nuisance? Yeah. Because we all are guilty of this. We're all guilty of being in a place, not wanting to talk to anybody, and just going... And making sure that you don't make eye contact, you don't fucking look at anybody, Yep. making sure nobody knows anything. So how long is it before anybody who says anything to you that you don't have any predetermined uh, initiative with, yeah. right? Not a cashier, not a guy at a supermarket, none of that stuff. Some person in a waiting room starts talking to you. How long is it going to be before people are just like... <laughs> Fuck that guy. And just turn. <laughs> Who the fuck is that guy? Yeah, like, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, message seriously. me. Yeah, like, like. <laughs> did you just speak to me? Yeah. No, it, it it's crazy, bro. I don't know where we're headed, but um, I don't know. Like, it's crazy, dude. The the world of whatever. I like to think, like I I said before, I think coming out of this pandemic, people are gonna want to be around each other. Yeah. I think people want to socialize. I think instinctively, as people, we do want to be involved with others socialize you know what i mean be back i mean for myself i can't wait to be back in like big crowds at like concerts oh hell yeah you know all that sporting events sporting events all that stuff man i can't fucking wait for it though you know just the excitement of it all yeah i miss that you know what i mean that gives you some life hell yeah because when you have a work week and you know you you go buy a ticket to one of your favorite artists you know i'm gonna go see fucking I'm gonna see Jake Paul fight Ben Askren. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go see the future go. concert at the Xfinity Center. Whatever it is, right. you know what I mean. It gives you something to look forward to. You know, I got this whole work week Monday through Friday, but I know I'm going there Saturday. It's something right. to look forward to. I think people have just been stuck in the cycle of like living life, whether it's working remotely from home, doing the same bullshit over and over. That people want to go back out. You know, so I right. I hope that you know people will be social again on the other side of this, but. You know what I mean? We can only fucking hope. Or people will just be fucking weird forever, wear masks everywhere they go. Right. <laughs> we'll see. I think what's dope for you is that you're um, moving to New York City soon. Um, you might have already moved by the time this episode comes out, but... Um, <laughs> what is it? All right, we'll, yeah, we'll figure that out later. You're moving in May, right? End of May or something? Um, I'm actually looking um, late June into July. Oh, okay. So we got right. some time. All right, yeah, yeah, so we got some time. Um, but what's cool for, for you and anybody else that's moving to some of these cities is that right now you're getting in, it's almost like buying low, right? You buy a stock low, you think it's going to shoot back up. It's like New York city and Los Angeles got hit fucking bad. They got shit on regulations, all type of stuff. Um, taxes are bad population, homelessness, like covid all all that just piled on and then they just got murked the last year yes um and different cities are starting to take over austin being the biggest one Huge. austin texas is becoming a hub for tech and entertainment and these type of things yep um so what's interesting for you is you're going to get to be in a monstrous city at almost a new beginning you're going to get in there at a at a, almost a buyer's market, if that makes sense. You're going to get in there yeah. cheap, and you're going to get in there when everything's building. So then you're going to be a part of it, which is fucking awesome. Which is awesome. And, um, you know, the way it's played out, um, I know we talked about it on the last podcast. Um, I will be moving out there for work, and I'm ex- super excited about it. We both love New York City. We've talked about it. Yeah. Um, but you're so right. It's going to be... 
I think by the time I'm out there, especially, it's going to be like a, like a new beginning or like a, just whatever of the city. Re- yes, that's what it was. Like, that's, a good, that's a good word. Isn't like, it? is that even a fucking? It's got rejuice, juice. In it, rejuice. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I think you know it's gonna have you know its second coming, whatever you want to call it, and yeah. um, I think it's all gonna be awesome. I saw recently the mayor of New York City actually said, like I said earlier, by June first they expect everything to be a hundred percent open, whether it be businesses, wow. events happening again. Um, just all of it. And, you know, to think I will be there at a time when, you know, it's all just going to reopen right around that time. You know what I mean? I can only imagine. You know what I mean? I've been yeah. to the city enough times that, you know, as a tourist, I've seen that side of it. Um, I went recently to see a couple of the guys I'll be living with. And you can tell there's a bit of a difference there. But there's still the hustle and bustle to it. There's still a lot of right. fucking people there. There's still, you know, things happening. But, you know, I think it could be incredible being there at that time when, you know, everything's going to be happening again. I hope... I get to go to concerts out there. I hope I, you know, I've ne- a, a goal of mine, not a goal, but like a bucket list thing. As much as I love comedy, I've never been to a comedy club. Oh, shit. And that is the place to do it. New York City and I am, is place. That's what I'm saying. One of the greatest yeah. places to do it. So I am so excited to have the chance to be out there and, you know, do things like that. You know what I mean? And see its second coming and like how it's going to work out because you're right. Like the rich and the famous just dipped out of there, whether it was yeah. there, LA. You know, there's a lot of other places across the country that are, like, establishing themselves as, like, those big hot spots right now. Right. So, you know, it might take time for them to rebuild. It honestly could take months, years, whatever it is, but it's going to be interesting to see. You know what I mean? I'll be hyped to be out there and everything, so. Yeah, man. It's going to be, like we were talking about, it's going to be the roaring 20s all over again, Yes, bro. sir. And being the in New York Gatsby City. The great Gatsby, boy. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> being in New York City, I mean, that's, like we're saying, the hub. There's, like, certain cities that draw people for certain fucking things like 100%. you got like New York City for money you got LA for fame you got Washington DC for power like yep. there's just certain fucking cities and and even DC another one that got hit bad, bad. With, you know aside from all the other shit that happened politically well that aside this is not a poli- <laughs> political podcast again uh, what's the word? Disclaimer. I almost said exclaimer. Yeah, disclaimer. Disclaimer. We no. don't talk that shit on here, right? None of that shit. Unless John Larkin's on or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different subject. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. New York City. Anytime I hear somebody just mention... Every day that I live not in... Every day that I'm not living in New York City is a fucking terrible day. <laughs> like, it could be... <laughs> it could be so many times better if I was just in New yeah. York City. Dude, and like I said, I went recently, and um, I, I, I was not worried about it, but I was like, I'm, I wonder if I'm still going to have the same feelings coming into the city about like moving here, and like yeah. I said, I went to go see a couple guys that I'm most likely going to live there with, and dude, I just like drove into the city, and the funniest part is, right, I'm trying to find these guys' apartment, and I drove in. I didn't take a train. Right. I drove in, which was crazy, um, and I'm like spinning their block for like 20 minutes trying to find parking. But I noticed the whole time I'm driving around and I'm just like looking around, I'm smiling. I'm like, wow, this is fucking awesome. Like, yeah. Dude, there's still, still that just feeling to New York City. It's still there. Yeah. It's still in the air. Hell yeah. And you know how I knew New York City was still alive? I finally find a parking spot, right? There you go. Parallel Park, I find a spot. The moment I do, there's this woman coming across the street. Taxi driver almost hits her. Oh. Immediately Beautiful. start screaming at each other across the street. <laughs> He's calling her a stupid bitch. Yeah. She's calling him a. De- I won't go into what she was saying. You know, right. I'm gonna try to keep it somewhat appropriate. <laughs> but just going back and forth on literally like she's on this side of my car and the taxi driver's on the other side of my car and they're going right. back and forth. And as much as like you would think it's like oh shit what's going on I was like oh New York City is alive baby right. where's there's still out here like yeah. it's still a thing and we so legal now. And weed's legal. That's you can crazy. Walk down Fifth Ave, smoking a joint like a G. I mean, I already tried that once, right. tried, but now right, it's right, like right. a thing. You know what I mean? It's now crazy you can't get in trouble for it. Now you can't get in trouble. <laughs> no, it's crazy to see. I can't believe it's almost like New York. The city had they literally have their own set of laws, rules. Hell yeah, bro. They're literally everything. their own entity. And yeah, I can't wait to be a fucking part of it, bro. It's awesome. Are you gonna be living? Um, in Jersey, or are you going to be living in... I'll be in, in the city. I'll be oh, in the damn. shit, man. Um, I'll be working in Manhattan, Soho specifically. Nice. Um, I'm looking around like the Midtown, um, Chelsea, Hell's Kitchen area. 
Still up in the air where exactly I'll be living, but around that area, can't live in Manhattan. I'm not fucking rich yet. We'll get there, hopefully, right. but one day, one day. Right. Um, but yeah, man, around that area, and I'm just super excited to be a part of it. You know what I mean? The the atmosphere, and it, it motivates the shit out of me to be there. It's just fucking awesome, dude. Hell yeah. Anytime there's like a change of scenery or a change of location, it's fucking... Yeah. It does something to you, especially a place like New York City. It's one of the greatest cities in the yeah, fucking dude. world. And it, I think it just gives you a bit more purpose. You know what I mean? Yeah. It definitely helps with that. Yeah. Hell yeah. I can't... I, I haven't been to the city in a fucking while, but... um. I can't wait to be back. It's always a lot of fun. You're going to be in Soho for the most part, right? You were mentioning? For work, for work yeah. For, for work, work yeah. at least. Um, I went to Midtown when I was there last time, and I fucking love it. So yeah, I really yeah. hope I can live out there, man. That'd be awesome. But, you know, time will tell, and it'll go as it goes. Um, you know, I, I like that things have kind of lined up the right way. You know, I'm getting out of school, and it's going to get... You know, it's going to happen right away. I'll be working remotely, but I think that might help me kind of get integrated into the job. Right. By the time I'm out there, I'll be ready to fucking go. So that's well, it, While you're in Soho, you got to take a stop at um, Gallagher's. Gallagher's really? Steakhouse. Really? Fucking fire, bro. Yeah. I went there for... Uh, I went to the city for an interview, and after I was done, I was walking around. I'm like, I'm kind of hungry. My bus doesn't leave for a little while, a few hours. Yep. And I just stumble upon this fucking nationwide famous steakhouse known as Gallagher's. Okay. They got pictures of famous people everywhere. You walk in on the right, there's the drying room, like the dry aging room. Yep. Like, and I just walked, oh, well, I'll just have a fucking a lunch here or something. And they were running a deal and I got like a filet. It was sliced. It was like the best fucking thing I've ever seen. Like, I've never seen a steak even anywhere similar to that. Yeah. It was fucking fire. So it makes it sounds sense. fucking fire. Yeah. The food is enough for you to blow your fucking head off. <laughs> yeah, I did. I'd chop a leg off for for cheesecake, especially in New York City. And New York cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, not that generic yeah. shit like we got in Rhode Island, right? Right, and BJ's. Yeah, it's all fucking it's fake. Well, all right. I think we're gonna wrap this motherfucker up, man. We've been going for a little bit. I feel like we can just get into it all the time, but honestly, yeah. uh, thank you for having me, brother. It's always a pleasure sitting down and talking with you. Yeah. I love the new studio. You're doing big things. Thank you, sir. Um, I mean, the last time I was on the show, we're coming from puddles, people. <laughs> we were, were in the water. That's puddles. right. <laughs> we were in the water. <laughs> we're coming from puddles. Tony's on his way up. Right. Um, yeah, the last time I was on the show, you know what I mean? You brought me downstairs. I didn't know if you wanted me on the podcast. Yeah. Or, initiating me into a fucking fight club i was like <laughs> yeah. i don't know what we're doing but i'm into it but no right. dude seriously i love to see what you're doing you've had a lot of like hard hitters on your podcast lately it's fucking awesome dude yeah and, you know your outlet what you guys what you're doing here is fucking awesome dude so thank you for having me again yeah man thank okay. you sir yes, um sir. i wish you all the fucking the we say the skill because luck is bullshit so Fuck <laughs> the luck what are we irish we wish you all the skill in uh in new york city you know you're gonna do your fucking thing out there so yes, sir uh make sure you guys follow uh follow me on all the social medias um the links are in the description and make sure you subscribe share tell everybody about us all that shit do you want anybody to know anything about you to, to, to follow you or anything or do you not give a fuck I um, always give people the option no I appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> I mean uh, like I said fuck Twitter that place is terrible but right. um, Facebook's for adults and um, you know family members but if you want to follow me on Instagram Tony Rita 98 um, it's really the only outlet I have other than that don't try to reach me no fuck that <laughs> fuck them <laughs> alright thank you guys talk to you soon peace